Hi everybody, my name is Dan Schmaltz and welcome to a virtual tour of the Cambridge Archives. Um, today we're going to take you through uh, what I call the city's best kept secret, um, the, our local archives. So right now we are in historic city hall, 46 Dixon Street, which is where the archives is located. Uh, this building, uh, as I said, is historic city hall. It dates back to 18... Uh, 57, 1858, when it was constructed as the second town hall for Galt. Uh, the original is actually over on Cambridge Street, 56 to 58, if you're ever curious about seeing the original town hall. Um, the archives has been here since about 1991, and uh, we are um, now a holding a collection of, I believe, over 125 specialized collection over 60,000 like original documents, uh, 15,000 photographs. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take you on a little inside tour of uh, the research area, the gallery, and the best part of all, which is the vault. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it and as much as I do giving the tour. So here we go. All right, guys, now we're in the uh, what we call the gallery. So this area has a number of different maps. It also has a space that we uh, generally make exhibits at. Um, so we're going to go through a couple of our more uh, famous maps that we have. Uh, we have the 1867 uh, map of Galt. Uh, anyone who's been at some of the different restaurants, like Cafe 13 in that downtown, you may have seen this one before. Uh, this is one of the coolest maps that we have. It gives you an idea of what Galt looked like in 1867. Uh, looking in closer, you can see like who owns the different properties in that. You'll see some of the, the street names are different than they are today. Uh, really good uh, tool to use when we're trying to date a property in that. So. Uh, and then getting back even further, we have the 1851 version. So uh, if you compare it to the 1867, even in just like a 16 year period, there's a lot of growth in Galt. Uh, so it's, it's really cool to see like the difference uh, in, in the maps. A couple other different maps that we have here. There's the one of, uh, of Preston as well. Uh, it gives you an idea of what Preston looked like. Um, and then we have uh, another topographical map um, here of Galt as well. I don't, this one doesn't get as much attention. Um, so there's just like a couple of samples on uh, the one side and then uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the others as well. All right, so more of some of the samples of the maps that we have. Uh, we have a uh, map of Preston here that dates back to about 1900. It gives you an idea of what Preston looked like at the time. Uh, around the uh, frame, there's different uh, buildings at the time, uh, like historic ones. And that uh, really cool thing I like to point out is that my house is in the middle of the uh, hops uh, uh, forest or like uh, the hops fields at the time so uh, my house is not even built yet so pretty cool um, these are a couple different uh, videos we worked with uh, with a gentleman by the name of Marty Lachance on uh, the then and now videos for Galt Preston and Hespler really cool you can uh, I think you can find them on YouTube somewhere so we worked in partnership with him on those uh, really fun uh, this is a uh, Organ from G. Blatchford & Co., uh, Galt, Ontario. It's uh, got to be getting at least about 100 years old. Um, a lot of people think it's a piano, but it's actually an organ, so. All right, everybody, welcome to the research area. I'm gonna take a little bit of a tour around here and show you some of the different uh, resources that we have in our um, research room. Normally, uh, during regular operations, this is where the public would come in and we would discuss what you're looking for and if there's any records that can help you with your research. Uh, we will take a look at uh, some of the ones that are available up here. Obviously, a lot of the stuff is available down in the vault. When we say archives, what we're really talking about is the vault. Uh, and we'll get to that tour, which is the fun part later. But first, we're going to show you a couple different records that we have here. So. Um, for just a quick start off, we have these uh, scrapbooks for people doing um, Second World War research. 
Uh, these are called the Grace Russ Scrapbooks. And Grace Russ had a couple brothers that fought in the Second World War. And what she did was she cut out newspaper articles for any kind of activity involving local soldiers. So, um, and sadly, like those who were wounded in action or killed in action, those coming home and that. And we have four volumes of these and they're a really, really valuable tool for anyone doing research on um, a veteran. Um, we also have a number of other different records. I'm just going to quickly point them out. Um, we have obituary cards, which list um, certain names and the dates of their deaths. Uh, this doesn't, it's not a master list, so not every obituary is included on these cards. A lot of these are also on the public search. Um, we have census indexes here um, that give you ideas as to uh, population statistics from different time periods dating back to about 1842. Uh, we have the cemetery indexes which are really valuable if you're trying to find out where a person is buried in the area. These were done about 20 years ago uh, for all the big cemeteries in town, uh, even some of the smaller ones. Um, we have the big one, Mount View. You can use that you can, and it's divided up by each section at the back of each section. We'll show you here. Um, you get an idea, uh, there's like an index of all the people that are buried. And for example, Mount View is divided into eight sections. Um, this is the wrong book. <laughs> All right, like I said, eight sections. So these are quite old. So you look at each section, at the back of each section, we have an alphabetical list of names. And what you can do is you can look up a person that you're looking for, and then it gives you a little um, description, like a coordinates of where in the cemetery they're buried. And then you look a little further up in the section, you find that, and you'll be able to see a transcription of the tombstone. It's not a complete list. Um, it hasn't been updated in about 20 years or so. So that uh, hopefully will eventually get done. Uh, we have some of the obituaries that we used to cut out and put um, from the newspapers and glue them into here. These have all been scanned and they're available online. So um, we have the old Vernon's directory. So the number one question we get asked here is, I want to know about my house and I want to know how old my house or who lived in my house. So these are a great tool. Um, they are, they date back to about 1900 and they go every two years or so up to about 2014 and that's when they end. Um, a number of them are digitized as well, so we have those. Um, it kind of works like a phone book. You can look up and then there's the um, index with um, people's names or you can go by streets. Streets you look up and uh, you go by the street, the number, and you can kind of see who is living at what place. Um, really good, like if you look uh, one year and you're thinking that's roughly when a house was built, okay, you see the uh, address, like I look 50 Dixon Street, it says Historic City Hall. I go back a couple of years, I look up there, it's not there. It's a good indication that the building wasn't there at the time. So really good tool for um, learning um, about history of homes. We also have them scanned and they're all, they are um, not available online, unfortunately, because the files are just too large, but uh, we do have uh, a number of them scanned, so. I'm just gonna point out a few. This is one of the projects I was working on before um, the pandemic started. I was organizing some of the obituaries we'd cut out. The filing cabinets here at the back are uh, clipping files, so different subjects. So we have like churches, um, uh, sports, um, different kind of subjects. Uh, so anything that was uh, we found in, like, in the newspaper, uh, we'd cut out the articles dealing with that subject, put them all in one folder, and they're also indexed on our public search as well. So really great resource uh, if you're looking for a specific topic. A um, couple different little uh, pieces of art that we have here. Um, there's a view of Galt, uh, early Galt, Shades Mills. Uh, it dates back to about 1858. Uh, this one here has a little picture of a sketch of Galt from around 1820. This is an 1894 map of downtown Galt. 
pictures of Absalom and Shady William Dixon, the two men who founded Galt. Uh, another little um, drawing of just across the river. Um, we got our microfilm reader, which is what we used our thousand rolls of microfilm downstairs, which is mainly newspapers dating back to the 1850s. So we do have a number of newspapers uh, physically also um, microfilm. We use this to uh, go through those. And uh, yeah, that's like some of uh, what we have. And we're going to continue to move on and uh, go over some more of the uh, different things that we have in the research area. All right, so what I'm going to show you here, everyone, is uh, one of our many um, birth, death, and uh, marriage registers. So as you can see, this one is Galt, and it covers 1895 to 1908. So I'm just going to open up here. You notice that I'm wearing these gloves. Um, for a lot of older um, documents, we wear those to uh, protect the uh, paper from the oil on our skin. So we do that just to, to keep the records safe. So this is a part here is a death register. So um, there's Obviously, there's the name of the deceased, uh, their date of their death, unfortunately, their age, uh, where they lived, their occupation, where they were born, uh, of course, cause of death, uh, the name of the doctor, um, a religion, uh, the name of the person who's reporting the death, and then the date of the registration. So there's that, and similar things with the uh, births and as well as the marriages. And we have these covering a number of different years. So. Not as much, uh, and uh, we haven't gotten really many of these in the last few years, uh, just due to more privacy uh, reasons. So there's not a lot. Anyone who would be still be living or um, had died in the last like 75 to 80 years or more, actually, probably closer to 100 years, uh, we wouldn't have that kind of information just due to privacy reasons. So. All right, everybody. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the more of the uh, materials that we have in the research area. Um, I'm going to point out a couple like cool little um, maps and documents that we have on the wall here. Um, personal favorite is the one on the left. It is uh, an indenture um, from 1811 from Susanna Sparkman and her husband to a Thomas Clark. Now why that's significant is that Susanna Sparkman was the sister of Philip Stedman. Philip Stedman was the gentleman who originally purchased the land that became Galt from the Six Nations. So this indenture is her um, giving the, selling the land to Thomas Clark and this dates back to 1811. The middle is a um, bird's eye view of Galt. It's a lithograph from 1875. Uh, we got this a few years ago. It was uh, donated from uh, uh, private citizen, so it gives you a rough idea of what Galt looked like in 1875. Uh, we can look, uh, if we looked close enough, you'd actually notice that places like the old post office and that are not even on this map yet, so pretty old. And this is one of the oldest maps that we have. It dates to 1826 of Dumfries, which uh, is what uh, William Dixon called the uh, original settlement, uh, which became Galt and other areas. Um, this is not exactly how it looked in 1826. This has names written of people who were purchasing a lot, so as they were sold off and all that, they'd add the names over time. Um, so we also have a couple of, actually more than a couple, a lot of really, really fascinating books. Um, it's getting closer to Remembrance Day, so I want to point out a couple that are uh, particularly important at that time of the year. This is a book uh, called Bloody Baron um, about uh, the Highland Light Infantry, the local unit uh, that uh, fought uh, in Normandy, uh, D-Day. And this uh, gives you a little bit uh, more details about their exploits and uh, their struggles uh, in uh, fighting in Europe. This is um, one of the books um, for the uh, Highland Infantry War Diaries. This gives you a more detailed, like, um, not so much details, sorry, uh, more like um, descriptions of their daily activities. It's not super, super exciting. There's not a lot of narrative, like, oh, 
the details of battles and anything like that. It's more so like squadron moved at this time of the day to this location. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, we actually have the full diaries downstairs, which are uh, pretty fascinating uh, stuff. So. Uh, further along here, we got a couple other books that I like to point out. Uh, going back to the Remembrance Day theme, we have um, a book that uh, Lynn Griggs and um, I worked on a number of years ago uh, called uh, City of Cambridge Honors Our Veterans. This gives you a little information on the different poppy streets in town. If you ever look at some of the street signs, you'll see a poppy on them. This has a little information on uh, the different veterans associated with those poppies. Uh, we got. Our Todays and Yesterdays, which is a book about uh, the early um, history of the area. If you're really interested in learning about early history of Galt, Preston, Hespler, and that, this is a really good one. Um, got, I have to give a shout out, of course, to our longtime archivist, uh, Jim Quantrell, who wrote these two books. We have Part of our past, which is like short little essays on different topics uh, on the area, and timelines, which is a chronological history of the area. Uh, when I started as a student at the archives about eight years ago, I was given these books by Lynn and uh, said, here, take a look and uh, read these. Um, I would recommend these books um, for anyone looking to get started about um, learning about local history. And they are available at the library. Um, and. Uh, you can take a look at them there if you want uh, while uh, we wait for the archives to reopen. So, And then we have a, a bunch of other different books. I don't want to go in through every single one. So um, we do have a pretty like cool selection of local history books here. Um, and that once we're able to um, accept people from the public again, if you're more than welcome to come and take a look at them. And they are also available at the libraries as well. So. All right, everybody, here we go. Now we're going to go into the Cambridge Archives vault, uh, take you in and uh, give you a little bit of a sneak peek of all the different kinds of records that we have in the archives. So here we go. All right, everybody, welcome to the vault. So, the, uh, like I said, the archives has been uh, in the Historic City Hall since about 1991. Um, it exists mainly due to the generous donation of uh, Toyota Motor Man Manufacturing. Uh, they donated $600,000 to the city um, in uh, the 80s, and uh, that was used to establish a climate-controlled vault for the archives. And that's what you see before you here. So this vault is climate controlled to be roughly 20 degrees Celsius and 40% humidity. It's designed to keep the records safe, so to prevent any moisture or any of the um, anything like mold growing on the records. So you try to keep the uh, temperature and the humidity around those levels. Uh, it's not so bad if it goes a couple degrees one way or a couple percentages one way and all that. It's, if it's wild fluctuations and that, it could lead to uh, issues with the records. So uh, we gen to keep an eye on it pretty often just to make sure that everything's safe. Um, give you a quick little idea to start with some of the, uh, the records we have here. I always like pointing out these guys uh, to people. Um, these are a collection of glass plate negatives from a photographer by the name of Robert Darrow. Um, he was a photographer in Galt. He operated uh, in the early 1900s uh, to about, I think it was 1919 or so. Um, he had like this was one of the actually first projects I worked on in the archives when I was a student. It's almost 1,800 individual glass plates that I had to input into the database. So these are a really cool uh, form of photography. I don't know if you can really see here. Uh, there's different uh, buildings and different people. There's actually a lot of uh, First World War soldiers included in these. A lot of them are not really identified by specific people. Uh, we did have, like, when we scanned them and put them online, we did have one person contact us and said that they, they knew who the person was. So we were able to actually identify um, that way. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this project uh, here is uh, special to me as it was the first one I did uh, when I started at the archives as a student eight years ago. All right, now let's take a look at some of the different records we have in here. Um, along uh, my right here, you're gonna notice that we have uh, 
a lot of boxes. Uh, I believe one day uh, a couple years ago I counted up that we have somewhere around 2200 boxes down here. Um, along this side what we're mainly going to have is uh, what we have is the vital records of the city of Cambridge. Um, so we have your council minutes and agendas, your bylaws, your agreements, uh, we have some deeds, um, things like that. Um, these are vital records that if something did happen to the city that, and we needed to reconstruct uh, the, uh, the city of Cambridge as an entity, uh, we could use these records to do that. So um, further down here we have our newspaper collection. And we have newspapers, physical newspapers, dating back until the 1850s. And uh, eventually later on I'll show you some of the microphone, but uh, we do have uh, a, a fairly extensive uh, newspaper collection. Um, one of the things I'm going to show you now is an example of one of those newspapers. This is the one I always like to show people. This is a 1912 Galt Reporter newspaper. And it uh, happens to be April 15th, the day of the Titanic sinking. So I always show people, it says, Titanic sinking, all passengers safely removed from wrecked uh, Allen liner. We all know that that's not exactly what happened. But as it just shows the way that newspaper coverage was at the time. If you look at it day by day, like the, the story gets like sadder and it's more tragic. Because you see Titanic, the Titanic tragedy, worst uh, is all too true. So it, it's not like today where you'd see like there'd be like people tweeting on the ship. Um, you'll have, uh, like it took days for the, um, the news to travel. And uh, as you look, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I always like to show this to students uh, to give them an idea of like, like we're in an age of instant news. Uh, back in the, this, these times, it wasn't like that. It took like a long time for the full story to come out. So really cool examples of uh, some of the newspapers that we have. Uh, I like to show those off. So sadly, some of the papers aren't in the greatest of shape, but uh, good thing we have them on microfilm as well. The next bunch of uh, records that we have on my left here is the old town records of Galt, Preston, and Hespler. So we have council minutes and bylaws and clerk's files and that all dating back into the 1800s for Cambridge's predecessor communities of Galt, Preston, and Hespler. Um, they're really um, valuable to kind of see like the initial bylaws of each, uh, of each town and slash city. Um, their council proceedings, like how it's really cool to read the the council minutes to see like how how they operated compared to today. And we have like council minutes back to the 1800s, and we have them all the way to the last council meeting. Uh, and then uh, it's one of the the cooler aspects of uh, of the archives. Um, what we also have is a collection in the middle here of 15,000 photographs. Um, most of which are scanned in online. That was another one of my first jobs uh, when I was a student. I scanned about 3,000 of them the first summer I was here. This is a really cool donation we got last year. This is a trophy for the Preston Scout House Band. Um, gentleman who uh, his brothers were a part of the, the band, uh, founded at uh, the um, Southworks Antique Shop, and uh, he uh, was uh, willing to donate it to the archives. So it was really cool that we ended up getting that. A um, couple other things we should take a look at. I always include this one is I like to show people the crown jewel of the archives collection. All right, so those who don't know, William Dixon was the founder of Galt and he purchased the land that became Galt in 1816. And before that, the land um, passed between a couple of different people and we have records uh, uh, dating back to those times. So I'm going to show you quickly here the oldest paper documents that we have. Now these are from the William Dixon papers, our uh, most prized um, collection. The entire thing, it, it details a lot of the um, early land transactions of what became Galt. These are from 1795 uh, from a gentleman by the name of Philip Stedman who originally purchased the land that became Galt from the Six Nations. 
Um, these are his some of his papers. We also have Dick William Dixon Seniors, a lot of his papers, a lot of like him keeping track of who he's selling land to, and we also have some correspondence between him and his agent Absalon Shade. Those two were the primary ones responsible uh, for building the settlement that became Galt, and we have. Uh, we were lucky to get a donation a couple of years ago uh, from a gentleman who found him in a shed in Blair. Um, and uh, there actually contained more papers uh, of Dixon's um, and correspondence between him and Shade, which is amazing. I'd never seen it before. So it's uh, really cool to read those. Uh, and we do have them as now as part of our collection. So this is like a really exciting uh, part of our collection and they are also scanned in online as well. So. Okay, so no uh, archives tour is complete without this. This is the creepy wheelchair. Um, this was a, the wheelchair of a uh, midwife by the name of Elizabeth, uh, they called her Mother Grass, and she was a German midwife from Preston, and this actually belonged to her. I don't know a lot of details about how it got here and all that, but I always like to point it out, and I uh, always used, uh, like to tell the story about how uh, when the security guards do their rounds um, at night here, the night shift and that, uh, they always have to come down here and they see this, and uh, some of them it's kind of kind of creeps them out and scares them and that. Uh, Cool story I like to say, I like to tell people, is when I first started in the archives, I, I came down here by myself, and uh, any of you who are old enough to remember the first Ghostbusters movie, and you remember when they go into the library and they see the ghostly librarian, and she like, goes to them and she shushes them, and that. When I first came down here and worked by myself, that's all I could think about, uh, and it kind of like, kind of creeped me out. Uh, I've never seen any actual like, ghosts or anything like that. I, I do know that this place used to be a, a jail at one point. Uh, but there's no like executions or <laughs> crazy stuff like that here. It was just like used as a jail at one point. And, uh, and now it's home to the archives and the creepy wheelchair. So here's one of our latest um, additions to our collection that we got last year. This is, uh, we got from uh, the Rare Charitable Reserve. Um, this is, uh, I know some of you might recognize it, it's the old uh, Lamb's Inn slash Nicholson's Tavern in Blair. Um, this, uh, they had it in the, the building and uh, just realized that they didn't really have much uh, like uh, of a home for it anymore so they contacted us and see if we wanted it um, absolutely i said uh, it's a depiction of what it looked like roughly in the 20s and i believe this was drawn in the 80s so this is a really cool uh addition to our collection eventually i'd like to find a way to display it uh, somewhere so people can see it So we also have um, a, a fairly extensive uh, art collection. So like this is one sample I'll give you right in front of you. This is the one of the latest ones we got. This gentleman is uh, Peter Jaffrey. Um, he was uh, one of the founders of the Galt Reporter newspaper. Um, and uh, this one we yeah, received as a, a donation from um, one of his ancestors, I believe two years ago. Um, and then behind me, we got a couple of different other ones that uh, we have. Um, we actually, um, a couple years ago decorated the archives vault for Halloween and uh, we used some of these pictures to make them look like I don't know if you've seen any of the old, some old like scary movies in that where you see like the old art pictures and like it looks like the the subjects are moving and that so we tried to recreate that effect and put up like fake spider webs and stuff like that and turned it into a haunted house and uh, it was a lot of fun one of the funnest things we've we've done with the archives and uh, we actually ended up finishing second place in the city competition uh, lost to the uh, the recreation people who are uh, usually the ones that win uh, they decorated the art center as uh, Alice in Wonderland so that was pretty tough to beat uh, but we finished a nice solid second and it was it was a lot of fun So we do have a number of, like I said, specialized collections and uh, uh, some devoted to individuals. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is part of uh, a couple like uh, items from the Claudette Miller um, 
uh, papers. So Claudette Miller, for those of you who don't know, was the first mayor of Cambridge and the last mayor of Preston. She was one of the first female mayors in Ontario, and uh, she was a big uh, supporter of the archives. Uh, we actually had her involved with our Hall of Fame process uh, over the years, and uh, she, a, a story I have to tell is that the year that she was uh, being uh, nominated for the Hall of Fame, she was on the committee and she was adamant that she not be inducted and I um, believe the whole committee was just shaking their heads and were like, Claudette, if there's anybody worthy of being in the Hall of Fame, it's you. But she w she just didn't think she was worthy of it, uh, which is crazy to think now. Um, but uh, it was really cool to have the opportunity when I first started here to, to, to work with her a few uh, times on a couple different projects and that. She was an amazing woman, way, way ahead of her time. And uh, this is part of uh, some of her like uh, collection. So we have um, her honorary fire chief helmet and my personal favorite. This is a plate from the Canadian National Exhibition, Mayor's Bathtub Derby Champion of 1974, Mayor Claudette Miller, Cambridge, Ontario. All right, everyone, um, like uh, always show people this. This is uh, part of an exhibit for Historic City Hall that uh, the archives did a long time ago. Um, it's really cool in that this is, as far as I can tell, the oldest photograph that we have. This dates back to 1857, and it is the laying of the cornerstone of this building. Um, so this is the first step towards building Historic City Hall. So it's like our oldest photograph, and it's a really cool one to show, and I really like uh, showing that one off. And then, behind me, we have this, and a lot of people when we show that, and I still remember the first day that Lynn took me down here and she showed me, she's like, what do you think that is? I'm like, oh, it's like, it's a cool painting. She's like, look closer. I looked closer and realized that it's actually a needle point. Uh, yeah, so someone did it by hand and, uh, and it is, it's super cool. I don't know what it's actually depicting. It looks to me like something out of like Spain or something like that, but uh, it was donated by a local, uh, um, resident, uh, I believe, is Sterling McGregor, a number, or his family, a number of years ago. So, all right. So back here uh, we have our uh, collection of um, historical maps. These are um, what we call fire insurance uh, plans. Um, we have uh, this one of Hespler from, I believe, 1885. Uh, so it gives you kind of an idea of what's in Hespler. Uh, the different colors usually indicate a different building material. Um, so on this one, you'll see there's a, there's a key and it says uh, red, anything red is brick. Uh, anything blue is stone. And I believe anything yellow is wood. And then gray, I believe, is not on here so uh, but anyway this gives you kind of an idea of like what uh, Hesper looked at at the time what we also got here is uh, so it's not shiny is galt this is the uh, the main key plan uh, so you see like all the different numbers all the different sections they correspond to a number of different pages so you look at number two in the middle there and then we pull this There it is, number two, and it is a zoomed in version of that area. Really great tool for trying to determine if there's a building in a certain location at, at a certain time. So this ones are from about 1910, updated to about 1925. And we do have a couple different other ones uh, for Galt, Preston, and for Hespler as well. And then uh, also what we got here is uh, just beside uh, here we have our collection of a thousand rolls of microfilm, which this one here is a uh, example of the Galt Weekly Reporter uh, from 1920, January until December. So we have about a thousand rolls and they include uh, the old Galt Reporter, the Dumfries Reformer, the Hesper Herald, the Prestonian. Uh, we have some of the Dixon papers online. We have some of the census stuff. We have some of the Highland Infantry stuff all on microfilm. 
and uh, we uh, have the microphone reader upstairs which people can take a look at and uh, generally they're looking for like you're looking for an obituary for a relative and that that's what they're looking for and they'll go through the newspaper and I always tell people I'm like careful when you start going through the newspaper because you almost always get distracted by what what's going on in the world at the time what are the prices for groceries at the time uh, stuff like that or the TV guide that was included in some of the uh, the issues and that it's really cool like once you get started uh, you see some really like uh, incredible stories so actually there's actually one more thing I want to show you I almost always forget this is this this if we can see it okay is the Robert Leggett collection now Robert was a uh, gentleman from Blair who spent about 10 years of his life developing this so he taking pictures of all the different properties in Blair with little uh, captions on each one this goes down about seven layers or so and then underneath that there's a whole bunch of different documents uh, papers and that on the history of Blair and it's all contained within this trunk um, it's really hard to move around so uh, usually we have to uh, um, uh, basically take a person down here to take a look at it, it, it it's really cool if you're interested like he spent a ton of, of time doing this and we're lucky that he was uh, able to donate it and then there's another map of what Blair looked like in about 1955 so this is uh, just like a little bit of like kind of some of the stuff that we have uh, down here so all right guys well um, that looks uh, to be the end of our tour of the uh, Cambridge Archive so I hope you enjoyed this virtual look behind the scenes of uh, the city's best kept secret um, it's been a lot of fun I want to thank idea exchange and uh, Laura Pellian for uh, working together on another awesome project uh, this has been a lot of fun so I hope you got a chance to, to learn something new today um, we uh, it's, it's been different for everybody this year and uh, it's been really cool doing these like virtual looks behind the scenes so hopefully we can do more in the, uh, in the future. Um, if you have uh, any questions um, you can uh, reach out to the archives at uh, archives at cambridge.ca and we'd uh, be glad to answer any of your questions. The archives unfortunately are closed at the, uh, at the present time and we're hoping to eventually uh, uh, once the pandemic settles down and that uh, to reopen to the public. So thanks for uh, coming along today and I hope you enjoyed your time uh, touring the archives.